So now we're ready to get into the programming part. I'm going to just delete the program that's here. Before we jump in, let's go back and review what we're going to do. I'm going to write a very simple program, but you're going to see that it's not going to work properly, and we'll talk about what we need to add to it to get it to work and why it wasn't working. So I'm just going to come up with uh, six rungs that do exactly this. Start push button triggers A extend, A1 triggers B extend, B1 triggers C extend, C1 triggers C retract, and so on back till A retract. So now we're going to create the program. I'm just going to go to programs, right click, add a new folder, and I'm going to call this sequential ABC. Now we're going to approach the programming a little differently. The last time in the last lab, I demonstrated using this program library to bring out around the ladder logic. And what I'm going to do this time is show you a different method that's got a little more flexibility and is better going forward. So down here where it says palette, you click on that. And down here, ladder blocks, ladder elements gives you some things to work with with ladder programming. So it, it'll come up looking like this and what we're going to do is six very simple rungs they're just going to have one input and one output so you need to click and drag to select this whole rung here and we'll just place that here and now what we're going to do is copy it again we're going to click and drag to select it and you can either do right click edit copy and then right click edit paste and then click where you want to paste it. But the quicker method is if you select it, go Control C, Control V. That's the shortcut. So Control V, Control V, one, two, three, four, five, you need one more. Okay. So there's my six rungs. The other thing that's nice about this palette is that if you click on symbol list, all those symbols we created in the symbol table are here and available and to assign them to inputs and outputs is just simply a matter of dragging them over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my start button here and that's going to cause the A actuator to extend. When the A sensor 1, which is the sensor that senses extension, goes true, I'm going to have that trigger the B extension solenoid when the B sensor 1 goes true, I'm going to trigger the C extension. When the C sensor 1, which is here, goes true, that's going to trigger the C retract. Then when the C retract sensor, that C sensor 0, goes true, that's going to trigger B retract and then when B retract sorry B sensor 0 goes true that's going to trigger A retract so and I mentioned that it's a very simple program but you're going to see that it's not going to work and um, so I want to be able to see the program while I'm running it so I'm going to make the window a floating window and just shrink it down a little bit. I'll put it over here to the right. Actually, I'm going to put it to the left. So then when we're working on it later, we can we can watch both the PLC window and the program window. Okay, now we have to go through um, the program. We have to go to compile takes a moment to compile to compile then program connect then we hit the green play button and turn on dynamic display so let's try it out we press the start button and nothing happens okay so if you look at the ladder diagram when I press start you'll see that the start input goes true and it makes a extend go true the problem is, if you look down lower on the diagram, I'm also having a retract true. 
I've written a rung that says if B sense zero is true, then make A retract. So what I'm doing is telling to extend and retract at the same time. And so the solenoid doesn't move anywhere because it's being forced back in uh, the retract position. It could be that you might have a solenoid valve where one of the solenoids overrides the other one. But in most cases, if you power up both sol solenoids at the same time, nothing's going to happen because they cancel each other out. All right, so we're going to fix that. We're going to close um, the dynamic display, stop the program, and disconnect or unconnect. And let's go back to the slides. So we're going to have to find a way so that the reverse motion part of the process doesn't interfere with the forward motion part. What we're going to use is a bit and we're going to define a forward phase and a reverse phase and we're going to set the bit to 1 during the forward phase and to 0 during the reverse phase. So when start is pressed, we're going to set this forward bit to a 1 and then extend the A actuator. If forward is 1 and sensor A1 is true, we're going to extend B. If forward is 1 and sensor B1, B1 is true, we'll extend C. So that would complete our forward part of the process. The reverse part, what we're going to do when, when the sensor C1 is true, that means C1 is fully extended, we're going to retract C and also reset forward to zero. Now with forward at zero and sensor C0 is true, we'll retract B. If forward is zero and sensor B0 is true, we retract A. So you can see how because the forward bit has to be zero in order for A to retract, it's not going to, just because it's B is in the retracted position when, when the process starts, this will prevent it from interfering with the forward motion. Okay, back to the program. I'm going to fix the ladder logic to look like what we just saw. Now I'm going to need another bit. I'm going to create this forward bit. So I have to go back to my symbol table and add. And I'm just going to call it FWD for forward. And so I need to use a bit that's not an output or an input. It's an, a, just a bit in the PLC memory that doesn't map to a physical output or input. And the syntax in AutoSim for that is U. U100, I'm going to just use the number 100. I could use any number, but I'm just going to use 100. So there's my forward bit. So back on the ladder diagram, we're going to make some changes. What we have to do is add another output to this rung. And I'll show you how to do that in the palette. Now this output is going to set the forward bit to true. So it's a special output. If you go down to ladder blocks, you see the basic types of inputs and outputs. So there's your examine if closed, examine if open, and these are pulsed inputs, which we may use uh, in some other later program. But the ones we're looking for are the ones labeled R and S. So this one, S, is called a set output. So if you click on it, it turns green. You can then drag it over into the diagram. Now, so we want to make it in parallel with this. And this is a little bit clunky, but once you get used to it, I think you'll get the hang of it. If you go to the blocks tab up here, what we want to do is make a little right elbow connector and then a, and a T connector. You actually have to grab the, the different types of connectors from this list of blocks. So this is the one we want click that and when, once it turns green you can then drag it over and then we have to do a T connector that looks like this and it may give you this little warning message just hit click ignore anytime you write over something that's already there 
you have to click ignore. And then to join this part of the rung, we need a T connector coming from the left. And then we just need to extend this rung down with a straight line. So that would be right here. So yeah, it's a little clunky, um, not like, you know, some of the other ladder logic editors where you can just drag the inputs and outputs and, and uh, plop them on the rung and everything works great. Um, it's, it is what it is. So we're going to have to just live with it. So anyway, that first rung is going to, when I hit start, A will extend and I'm going to set the forward bit. So let's go back to the symbol list and take our forward bit and label it here. All right, and then the next rung, uh, I might as well just take this rung and I'm just going to modify it. So I need to add another input. Go back to my palette ladder blocks and just drag an input over here. And there's my little warning message. Just click ignore. And so in this one, when when the A sense is true, A sense one. I, w I want the B to extend only if forward is true. Actually, I'm going to change the order just because it reads better. I'm going to make this the forward bit and then the A sense one here. 